All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here today. Um, there's just some things that have been bothering me since January and February when this whole announcement, when Mayor Rhodes came out here and stood and rolled out this whole plan about what they're doing here. And as you can see, by that, that billboard and that placard, the city managers fool into it, the council's fool into it. They're saying these buildings are gonna come down. There is no funding source, there's no debt limits. I mean, there's no debt ability. Uh, it, it's just, it, it just keeps troubling me what's going on here. So I've gone back and if you look at the 2014 budget, 14-15 at capital improvement highlights, there's nothing in here about a new library. There's nothing in here about the Children's Museum. Come to 15-16, once again, capital improvements, Council's strategic initiatives, what Council's planning on doing, what their long-range plans are, 15 and 16. Nothing about a children's museum, nothing about a library. Then you get to 1617. Once again, there's nothing in the 1617 budget, Council's agenda, Council's initiative, or the capital improvement long-range plans to do anything. So taking that, um, this budget, this one covered 1617. This covered January, the first six months of this year, up to the fiscal year ends on June 30th. And the mayor came out here and stood and said, this is the plan we have. Where'd the plan come from? Where did they just pull it out of the air? So the other day I came down and went, came to the executive director, walked in and asked for a plan. They've been saying, it's been reported in the press that there's been 12 sales for $3.2 million. And I walked in and asked the executive director, you know, can y'all give me that? Can you just, there's gotta be a list. Can I have the list? And he sat there and went round and round for a while. He, he got out a piece of paper, did some scribbling. And he said, I just don't have those numbers. You know, he said, you're gonna have to wait until his assistant comes back. I said, okay, I mean that, I would think as the executive director and you have a major 10 to $15 million project, you're gonna tear down and build ground for, you would know. You know, in the last two days, I've known every tax map number of each of these parcels. I understand their values, what they were sold, and I'm not getting paid $100,000. Uh, Mr. Seabock has made upwards of $2 million during his employment here, and he can't answer these questions. So in, in fairness, Lauren, uh, she sent me a list. And this is the DRC acquisition list she sent me. Uh, it gives the values, the date sold, the seller, the property name, and uh, it's only 11. It's not 12 parcels, and it's only 2.9 and not 3.2, but, you know, who's really keeping track? It's, it's just taxpayer money. At the end of the day, the parking revenues that come in, uh, they've, in the last five years, the DRC's taken in more than $9 million, and that's taxpayer money that's going to the nonprofit. So then I created a little chart and I went back and started and then most of the sales on these properties have happened 14, 15, and 16 and then they were all resold this year to the DRC in 17. Um, you go around the corner, there's two buildings, one sold for $6 a foot, the other one sold for $8 a foot just 24 months ago. And so what did, what did the DRC do? They started going and buying properties. And in buying these properties, over the last, if you take 14, 15, and 16, the average, now it could be real technical, but for, for argument's sake, the square footage these buildings were bought for $15 a foot. The six and an eight were on the low end, but as an average across the board, all the transactions in the last three years have been in the $15 range. Now, what they've done, they've come in and paid an average of $66 a foot for these buildings with a high of $130 a foot. Why? That's irresponsible. And the chart breaks out, you know, it actually gives the, ta um, the, the county's tax map, the market value, which, you know, usually that's kind of low. You usually sell for above the market value. But once again, the values they sold for is two and three times the market value. If it's not, if it's kind of a depressed area, you should be getting deals, not be paying premiums. And that's what's happening. But the one that troubles me more than any 
Do y'all know of anywhere you can go and make 325% on your money in four minutes? That's what's happened. You go around here, you go around to a building on the left, and on 324, uh, a group sold it for $100,000. It went to an LLC. And the LLC is called Holly Farms, Holly Family LLC. For $100,000, it was bought. And four minutes later, it was resold for $325,000 to the DRC. And do you know where Holly Family LLC's P.O. Box is? It's P.O. Box 2468. The DRC's P.O. Box is 2468. You know, that, that's according to the county. That's according to the county website. And then if you go back and look at the letter that the DRC sent me to give a value, they put a value of $150,000 on that building, but the deed value recorded in the courthouse is $325,000. Where has the other $175,000 gone to? So what I'm asking for is uh, for the, the mayor and city council to do a forensic audit on the $9 million in revenues the DRC has taken in over the last five years. And I'm, and I'm asking for a stopping of business in the DRC. No transactions, no purchases, no buying. The DRC has ceased to operate until an audit is done to get an accounting of why the taxpayer has spent exorbitant amounts of money on this property. And you know, I'm going to give a copy of this. I'm leaving here and going to the mayor's office and I'm going to say this is a request. And it's also it's going to involve Mr. David Zipok, Zipok the executive director, Mr. Chuck Martino, the board chairman, Mrs. Ann Britton LeMay, the vice chairman of the board, and Mr. John Peterson, the city manager, and also the acting treasurer of the DRC. Yesterday I had the fortunate ability to sit through a, a presentation and it talked about all the problems we're having on the level, the state level, and all the problems with Santee Cooper and Scanna and the whole issue of the nuclear power plants and everything's upside down. But at the end of the day, what was made very clear to us, the legislative body, they're as, as responsible as the employees of both companies. The government has to be responsible for the way the money's being spelled, sp spent. And I'm, I'm calling on Martino, Seabock, Britton LeMay, and Peterson to answer the people what's going on down here. And with that, I want to thank y'all for being here today. Now, I'll, I'll be happy to take any questions. Yes, sir. Hey, there goes Mr. Carey. Hey, Ed. It's a great question. I think the forensic audit and an investigation and putting a stop on all the monies going out from the DRC, they can continue to bring in our tax revenue monies, but it, I'm calling on no money to be spent from the DRC going forward until these questions are answered. Why a real estate agent is getting paid a monthly plus commissions on exorbitant overpriced purchases. All right, thank you all.